أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على فاطمة وبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها وجعلنا من شيعتها وناصريها والعن من آذى نبيك فيها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا سين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مقمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأغشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر خشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليهم اثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانيك هو الأبتر صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله الكريم 
ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين صلوات صلوات الثالثة على حب فاطمة الزهراء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين أحمده وأستعينه وأؤمن به وأتوكل عليه وكفى بالله وكيلا ثم أصلي وأسلم على خاتم أنبيائه وأفضل سخرائه المحمود الأحمد المصطفى الأمجد أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا First off, first off, I would like to begin tonight's speech by offering my condolences to our Imam, our Savior, Al-Mawla, Sahib Al-Zaman, Ajjal Allah Ta'ala, Farajah Al-Sharif, for the martyrdom of his mother, Fatima Al-Zahra, as well as offering my condolences to you, to the believers. And I will also like to bless this majlis by reciting the small visitation or salawat of Lady Fatima al-Zahra, which is only one of two narrated um, ziyarat for Fatima al-Zahra. All the other uh, ziyarat are, well, for the lack of a better um, phrase, they were um, written by our scholars, whereas we only have two ziyarat that are actually narrations from the Ma'asumin. We'll bless the Majlis, inshallah, with this Allahumma salli ala as-siddiqah Fatimah al-Zakiyah Habibati habibika wa nabiyik wa ummi ahibbaika wa asfiyaik allati intajabtaha wa fadhaltaha wa akhtartaha ala nisa'i al-alameen Allahumma kun al-talib laha min man zalamaha wa istakhaffa bihaqqaha wa kun al-thaira Allahumma bidami awladiha Allahumma wa kama ja'altaha umma imma al-huda وحليلة صاحب اللواء والكريمة عند الملأ الأعلى فصل عليها وعلى أمها صلاة تكرم بها وجه أبيها محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وتقر بها أعين ذريتها وأبلغهم عني في هذه الساعة أفضل التحية والسلام صلوا على محمد وآل محمد قال الله العظيم في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد كان لكم فيهم أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر ومن يتولى فإن الله هو الغني الحميد الله سبحانه وتعالى in one of his miracles has created human beings all of his creation they are very similar so I don't know if anyone at school has seen this, where they compare between the forearm of different animals. And you'll find that the forearm of the human being and the blue whale and the wing of a bird, they have a lot of similarities. So it's amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created human beings along with all the other creatures so similar and yet they're extremely different. And so humans, for example, are extremely social. And they develop and grow in a society. Whereas if you look at other species, cats, for example, they actually develop when they're alone. So if they're living with their mothers, their mothers would feed them. It is only when, they're, when their parents or their mothers um, abandon them, that's when they start to learn how to feed themselves, how to hunt. 
And so subhanAllah, this is one of the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He creates human beings with a clean slate. Unlike maybe some other uh, creatures of, of, of some other creatures in existence, human beings are created with a clean slate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you out of the wombs of your mothers and you have no knowledge. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we give you your ears and your eyes and your hearts so that you may be thankful. So the way that we develop is with other people, which is why schools, when you go to a school, you're never the only student in a classroom. There are 20 other students which learn with you. And so this is how human beings are. We are very social and we are influenced and we grow and develop in a society with other people. And this is very important for us to understand. Why? Because wherever you put yourself, then you will be influenced by your surroundings. And so if you allow yourself to be influenced by these um, content creators online, these influencers, if you allow yourself to be influenced by someone who is toxic, then you will also become somebody that is toxic. If you allow yourself to be influenced by the likes of Andrew Tate, then you will also pick up the habits of the likes of Andrew Tate. Because it is what it is. As a human being, you learn from your surroundings. Try this as your own experiment. At school, or at work, or wherever you are, Put yourself in a group of people. This happens at schools more often. Normally you have the smart kids. They're um, always together. And then you have, for example, the Arab kids. They're always together. The Chinese, they're always together. Try this for yourself. Go out and try to be in the group of the smart kids. Very quickly, you'll find yourself influenced by the smart kids. You'll notice that your grades will get better because it is how we are. But if you choose to put yourself with the dumb kids at school, then you will also pick up their habits. You'll notice that your grades will get worse. You will get lower grades because you are influenced by your surroundings. And this is one of the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Humans get acclimated to their surroundings. Now, this is very important. Why? Because it teaches us that you're able to choose and be selective of the people that you're inspired by. And so if you choose, for example, to be inspired by trash, then you will be inspired by trash in one way or another. But at the end of, at the, end of the day, you are being inspired by trash. If you allow yourself to be inspired by toxic individuals, then you will become a toxic individual. But if you were to allow yourself to be influenced by someone who's positive, someone who is kind, someone who is good, then you will eventually pick up their habits. And so if you are looking for something, if you're looking for a, a, a specific habit to pick up, or if you're looking for a specific field of knowledge, put yourself in the group of people who have this habit or have this knowledge and very quickly you will pick up their habits and you'll take from their knowledge. Now, in a hadith which again represents what I just said, Imam al-Sadiq narrates the hadith from his father who says, so Imam al-Baqir is saying that one day my father, Imam al-Sajjad says to me, that if you are looking for a friend, then I will give you a criteria. So if you're looking for someone to befriend at school or at work or in the gym or wherever you are, I have a very good criteria. I will tell you groups of people that you should avoid because it's very important for you because again, as we said, 
you're always influenced by your surroundings. And so the Imam alayhi salam says that I don't want you to pick up any bad habits, which is why I am warning you to associate from associating with certain groups of people. Now, one of the so Imam al Baqir alayhi salam says, Ya Aba Manhum, who are these people that I should avoid? The Imam alayhi salam says, the first group of people that you should always avoid are the liars. Do not become the friend of a liar. Why? The Imam says, because a liar is like a mirage. A liar is a very good illusionist. So he will, for his own um, interests, he will make something that is very close to you appear to be very far away. These are the words of the Imam. And he will make something that is very far away from you look as if it's very close to you. So that's the first group of people. Always avoid the liars. And um, what I just said, you will also, once you put yourself in a position where everyone around you lies for their interest, you will also become like them. You will also pick up this bad habit of lying to protect yourself and your best interest. Then the Imam alayhi salam says, وَإِيَّاكَ وَمُصَاحَبَةَ الْفَاسِقِ Do not become the friend of someone who is a fasiq. Fasiq is someone who does not care about the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he goes to the supermarket, he just grabs something and he immediately eats it. He doesn't care about reading the ingredients. He doesn't mind if it's, if it's not halal. He doesn't mind if it's not vegetarian. The Imam alayhi salam says, do not become the friend of someone who does not care about the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? The Imam says because this type of person is a sellout. If he does not care about his uh, life in the other world, then he does not care about you. He will sell you for a single meal or even less, the Imam alayhi salam says. فَإِنَّهُ بَاعِعُكَ بِأَكْلَ وَأَقَلْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ أو أقل من ذلك. Then the Imam alayhi salam says, وَإِيَّاكَ وَمُصَاحَبَةَ الْبَخِيلِ Do not become the friend of someone who is stingy. Why? The Imam says that someone who is stingy is a useless human being. At your extreme times of need, when you have, uh, you, you have to pay your repayment, your mortgage, or your car loan, and you don't have a lot of money that month, you're not doing well, you give them a call, and they never have money. They are never able to help you. The Imam alayhi salam says, stay away from this group of people that are never helpful to, uh, helpful to you. At your times of great need, these people will neglect you and will abandon you. Then the Imam alayhi salam says, وَإِيَّاكَ وَمُصَاحَبَةَ الْأَحْمَقِ Stay away from the idiots. Do not become the friend of someone who, even though they have good intentions, but then even if they're trying to help you out, sometimes they will harm you. Imagine if you're in the middle of a river and you're about to drown and you ask the help of someone who doesn't know how to swim. The most likely scenario is that this person himself will drown and he'll take you down with him. So the Imam alayhi salam says, do not become the friend of such a person. Then the Imam alayhi salam says, وَإِيَّاكَ وَمُصَاحَبَةَ الْقَاطِعِ لِرَحْمِهِ Do not become the friend of someone who neglects kinship, someone who does not care about their family ties. God forbid someone who has um, disassociated from his family or his, um, his parents. Do not become the friends of these, these people. Why? Because the Imam alayhi salam says that I have found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursing the one who neglects kinship three times in the Quran. The point of this entire hadith is it shows how um, influential a friend can be. Very quickly, if you find yourself in a group of toxic friends, you'll find that Maybe first day, second day, you won't like being around them. But very quickly, you'll, 
you'll, you know, you'll, you'll feel comfortable with them. Maybe you'll even pick up their bad habits. And this is what we want to stay away from. Again, all of this is to show how we as human beings are susceptible to influence. We immediately are influenced by our surroundings, by our friends, by our parents, by our families. In another hadith, very interesting hadith, um, I think Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam says, Anas bi umara'ihim ashbaha minhum bi abaihim. People look like their um, government leaders more than they look like their parents. And I don't know if you've noticed this. If you type on Google Saudi man, the most likely scenario is you'll find someone who is wearing the red shmar and has a goatee. All the Saudis have goatees. Why? Because their kings and their monarchs always have goatees. But then type Kuwaiti man, you'll find men that don't have goatee, but they have a single mustache. Why? Because their kings always keep a mustache. If you type um, Emirati man, you'll find someone with a full beard. Why? Because their kings and their emirs always leave a full beard. And so people always like to look up to other people. They always look for a role model to follow. Now, again, this is just to show how we are susceptible to influence all around us. Once we understand this, that we are susceptible to influence, here is where we come to what Islam says. You see, Shia Islam has a distinct quality. No other religion, no other faith has this. And that is our belief in infallible people. We believe that the prophets, alayhim salam and the imams, Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam they are all infallible, which means that if you pick up any aspect of their lives, you can follow in their footsteps. And they will always lead you to perfection. Whereas if you follow the lead of a um, soccer pro uh, player, let's say Messi or, you know, Tiger Woods, if you follow in his footsteps, maybe you'll be a good golf player, but then you risk being like Tiger Woods in terms of how he treated his family, or how he neglected his family, better yet. So the point is this, as Shia Muslims, we believe that whichever age group you're in, whatever your gender is, there is someone who is fitted to you, and they are perfect in every sense of the word. So if you happen to be someone who's, let's say, 13 years of age, then you can always look up to Qasim, the son of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. If you happen to be, for example, 18, 19 years of age, then there's Ali ibn al-Akbar. If you happen to be a girl that's around eight years old, then there's Sakina, the daughter of Imam Hussein. And so once we believe in people that are infallible, we can follow their lead. We can follow in their footsteps. And so you can be picky and you can choose your source of inspiration. You can choose your source of um, influence. And you can choose to be influenced by Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And this notion, the fact that we can be picky and we can be selective on our source of inspiration is why you find that someone who grows up in the city of Najaf can be a kafir, God forbid. But then someone who grows up in, in the West, in a non-Islamic country, let's say in Wollongong, could be a mu'min. Because the person who grew up in Wollongong has chosen to follow the lead of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, and the person who has um, grown up in, let's say, in the city of Najaf, and he's a bad person, has chosen to follow the lead of Zubair. And so you can be selective in your source of insp inspiration. And this is mind-blowing, if you think about it. Because you can choose who to be influenced by. I don't want to be influenced by these content creators on TikTok. I don't want to be like them. You see these people, I don't want to name them um, inside the masjid. But you see them, they say something stupid, 
on their YouTube channel, and then they come out a week later with an apology video. I don't want to be influenced by someone like that, who, makes a, who, who commits a mistake like that and has to apologize to 10 million people online. I don't want to be like that. I want to be someone who's perfect. Those are my ambitions. I want to be the perfect version of myself, which is why I am inspired by Abu al-Fadl Abbas, which is why I am inspired by Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, which is why I am inspired by Fatima to Zahra, because I want to be the perfect version of myself. Now, this is very important for us to understand, because once you look at, again, any, if, if you're looking, for example, someone to follow in their footsteps in terms of their knowledge, then there is the perfect example of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. If you are looking for somebody as a role model to follow in their footsteps in terms of giving up on all of their dreams to protect the Imam of their time. You see, Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, at the age of 18, you can imagine this, whether you're at the age of 18, a little bit below the age of 18, or a little bit higher than the age of 18. You can always imagine the fact that you'd be full of dreams and ambitions. You have the entire world ahead of you. You can do so much as an 18-year-old. That's when you get your driver's license. That's when you could go out. That's when you get out of school. You could go to university. You could choose your major in university, your career path. Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam had the entire world ahead of her. She had, she had the chance to be the most well-known and recognized women, woman in history. She had that option. But then to give all of that away. Imagine this. You have a, you know, you, you, you want to do something in life. Let's say you want to be a doctor or an engineer or anything that you want. You want to be a, an influencer online. And let's say you have the potential to do all of that. But then suddenly something happens and you have to give that life away. Let's say, God forbid, your mother gets sick or your dad gets sick and you have to care for them, which means that you have to give you have to give up your entire career. That was the position, well, in a very uh, bad example, but that is the position of Fatima to Zahra. She had her entire life ahead of her, but then she chose to give that up to protect the Imam of her time. And that says a lot. Because when I think about that, I think to myself, am I in a position where I am able to leave my life, leave my kids, leave my house, leave my car, leave my career, and end all of this to go out and to protect the Imam of my time? Am I ready for this? Because when the Imam alayhi salam appears, it's not like you'll get a notification on your phone which says, reminder, Imam al-Zaman will appear in three months, make sure that you have your luggage ready. No, 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 no. You have to get ready. You have to have been ready. You should be ready today for the reappearance of Imam Zaman alayhi salam. It's not like you'll get a, a reminder and then they'll, you'll get a second reminder. You'll get a RSVP. Are you sure? Are you coming? No. What are you going to do? It's not like that. Imam Zaman alayhi salam says in one of his hadiths, he says that our affair, in other words, the reappearance of Imam Zaman alayhi salam, is something that happens in a split second. Either, either you're ready or you're not. That's it. You won't get any notifications. You will not receive any reminders. Either you're ready or you're not. And unfortunately, when we look at the enemies of the Ma'sumin, not even the enemies, when we look at people who are indifferent in um, the story of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, or Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, the people of Medina who abandoned Fatima to Zahra and her requests, they were just not ready. And it's, it's much closer to us than we think. We could all be in that position where Imam al Zaman alayhi salam appears and we're not ready for him. We cannot give our support for him. And so this tells us that, again, going back to what I mentioned at the beginning, you can choose who to be inspired by. You can choose to be inspired by the best of God's creation 
or you can choose to be inspired by these low lives that you found you find today online in magazines in the big tv you can choose who you want to follow in their footsteps we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to first hasten the reappearance of our imam sahib al-zaman alayhi salam and second to forgive us our sins and to give us the opportunity to inshallah be able to support him uh, when he reappears hadha wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil